recently I had a man came over to me he said he got a vision and in the night in this night he has been having a business and has been having challenges and in the night he saw me go to his business place and when I arrived in that place I gave spirit instructions to him and what I told him to do in the night in the morning first thing he comes over and he says in the dream last time I've been praying over my business I saw you come into my business and you gave me spirit instructions I came to fulfill every instruction that I got in the dream Hallelujah. Anytime you see a man of God in a vision, you're seeing the Lord. I want you to know that God uses the image of his servants to appear to you. So when you see a vision of a man of God, it means God is appearing to you. And God is telling you, and whatever you're told, better take it very seriously. Because it has implications on your destiny. Can, you, can I have an amen? amen. You yeah, man needs a top up. Can I have a Amen. Glory to God. Yes. So in the night, we encounter spirit beings. You can encounter your angel in the night. You can encounter the Lord in the night. God visits people in the night. Abimelech was in the night, was visited by God. Abraham in the night, God tells him, let's go and count stars. Glory to God. Say, let's go and count stars. And he began to give him promises. So the night is for visitations. Can I have an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number, very related to it. There is very high spiritual activity in the night. Very, very high spiritual activity in the night. Now, I'm going to speak very freely on this one. Some of the things. Let me first read the word of God. Job chapter 33, Job 33, I want you to read verses 15 and 16. Are you there? Let's read it, one, two, we go. Uh-huh. Then he does what? Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And seals their instructions. It says in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he opens the ears of men and sealeth their instructions. Psalms 121, Psalms 121, I'd like us to read verses number 4 to verses 8. Let's read it together. One, two, we go. Behold, he that keeps... This is where you miss the word of God. Behold, I want you to begin from behold. Ah, uh, ah, it is not Israel. He that gives him a John. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's read it together. One, two, we go. He that keeps shall neither nor. Aha. Uh -huh. Verses five. The Lord is my shade on my right hand. Now, I want you to see these spiritual elements being introduced in verse 6. Go ahead and read it. The sun. Uh huh. Repeat that verse. Now, from this verse. Verse 6 says, the sun shall not smite you by day, and the moon shall not smite you by night. So this tells you something, that the sun and the moon, there is something that they do. Because honestly, how does the moon strike you? 
If you use common sense, how does it strike? How does the sun strike? So that tells you of the spirituality of these elements. Things can be programmed up there. The sun works like the computer. God told the sun to rule the day. And the moon also works like a computer. And God tells the moon to rule by night. They are rulers. And every ruler has a rod. Every ruler has a sword. And the purpose of this sword is for smiting. Are you hearing me? Now, it talks about the moon striking by night. I'm interested in the moon. The moon is for seasons. That's what you need to know. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 104 verses 19. Psalms 104 19. It says God gave the moon to watch over seasons. Or to determine seasons. The moon is to set seasons in people's lives. Now I want to bring to you something about spirituality of life in the night. I want you to know. Many people that find the problems, they will tell you there are problems we got at night. They say, you know, I was sleeping in the night and maybe I ate something in the sleep. When I woke up, my stomach began to hurt. Oh, when I woke up, I, I felt someone threatened me in the night. When I woke up, I found my body weak and now I am paralyzed. I cannot walk. I am now hearing strange voices coming to me. Hardly do people get those kind of encounters during daytime. Are you hearing me? Hardly do those things happen. It's very difficult for someone at, at daytime that they fell sick. Most sicknesses happen, they wake up when they are sick. Somebody went to bed fine, they woke up when they were sick. If you ask them what happened, say, I don't know. I just felt like there was a heavy load on me when I was waking up. I just found a coldness. I was feeling very cold in the night. I just found I had a dream. It was a nightmare. And such and such a thing happened to me in the night. You know why? Because at night, there is very high spiritual activity. Spirits are very active at night. Both angelic spirits and demon spirits. And that's why at night also, spiritual men are active. Both holy men and evil men. They are active. If they want to cast a spell, they cast it in the night. Hallelujah. If men of God want to rescue somebody, they do it at night. Because at that time, you can have contact with both spirit beings. You can have contact with the angelic beings. You can have contact with demonic spirits. You can also have contact with spirits of men. You can encounter spirits of men. Glory to God. Now, in order for you to deal with certain things, it's important for you to come face to face with the spirit. It's important to contact the spirit. And there are about three or four different ways of contacting the spirits. Number one is to get to know the name of the spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says one time Jesus was casting out devils and they were not going. So he said, what is your name? They said, my name is Legion. So that's one way of contacting spirits. Another way of contacting spirits is what Jacob did. Jacob had a troubled life. He was all the time running. He was going through pain, losses. And he got to a point that he got so tired. He got alone by himself in the night and he began to wrestle. That's another way of contacting spirits. So you can actually use the night to take on any spirit. Because there is very high spiritual activity around in the night. For example... Now I'm teaching intercession here. You have a partner who keeps cheating on you. Hello? Should I teach you practical stuff? Yes. Or you have a boss who is stubborn and is mistreating you. Or you have a client 
who is mishandling your business or you have a business that is failing, the best time to contact such people is in the night. Glory to God. That is the time you can take authority. Someone receives and say, I am going to a safari. And the safari is going to take two weeks. And in the two weeks, I will not be available on phone. And, I, and you know that what is going on is wrong. You've discussed and discussed. It is not making sense. You know what you do? Late in the night, you can summon their spirits and switch off the network and turn them back. The same with the boss. The same with the, the next point that I will explain is what will actually show you what you need to do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I've had several people, I've told them how to pray in the night and things have changed. You know? There are prayers you can pray for your family. You know, for example, if somebody has a, there are particular cases, not for everybody. So you must have wisdom also because you can easily destroy innocent people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Why? Because at night there is very high spiritual activity. If there is somebody who has been witching and so on, you can contact that person at night. You can meet them in the night. And meeting them does not mean that they physically appear to you. No, you don't need to appear to you physically. When anybody is at rest and they are not busy, the spirit does not sleep. That's what you need to know. Whenever anybody dreams, a dream is an activity of the human spirit when the body is resting. It is your body that will need rest, but your spirit does not rest. And so because the spirit does not rest, the spirit will be lingering about. You can pass instructions to a spirit. You can call out somebody and pass instructions to them in the night and say in the name of Jesus. If there is a child that is stubborn, you've tried everything and it's not changing. That time when they are sleeping, you can arrest them. And you begin to prophesy to the others and say from today, you shall walk with God. You shall be wise. You shall be excellent. Your way of life. They will wake up in the morning and they will say, I think what I was doing was not okay. From today, I'm changing my life. But you know, you did the correction where? In the night. Even in business. If the business is not going well, wake up in the night and summon clients. That's the time to summon clients. Summon them to come. In the morning, everybody will be thinking about you. They will be bypassing everyone, just looking for you. Say, is there anything that we can buy? Hallelujah. If there is a difficulty you're going through, and maybe someone is responsible, the best time to deal with them is in the night. Jacob dealt with his cases in the night. He wrestled with the men until daybreak. And when he woke up at daytime, he had a new name, a new destiny, a new identity. Can I have an amen? amen. So just get to know that when you go to, whenever you see the sun set down, High spiritual activity begins. Every spiritual person is active at that time. And you must engage at that time. You must engage. If you want to see changes, you must engage at that time. If you want to see answers, you must engage. If you have done anything, you've done everything and it's not working, try that time. Can I have an amen? amen. You can actually dictate if there is a meeting you are going to attend tomorrow, you can dictate it. How the meeting will go. And when you go for that meeting, there is no turning left or right because the spirit rules the physical. Can I have an amen? amen. And as a child of God, you not just cry in a holy. Don't cry at your disadvantage. You have a lot at your disposal. You can, you can interfere with anything. 
you can you can hack into any man's world hallelujah tell your neighbor say neighbor me see me like this i'm a dangerous spiritual hacker don't play with me i will mess you up somebody shout hallelujah so that's why you must engage at night that's why you must engage you must engage because very high spirit activity takes place there are things that are programmed in the moon when the moon strikes men why does it strike men because things are programmed there meaning men program things up there even men program things when they offer sacrifice and so on where are they registered to in the moon and in the sun and so you find somebody wherever you go there is a message up there and so what must you do write your own message write it up there i will take that in the second service when i will be talking about speaking to the elements of the earth but you can decree things not that you pray to the moon no we don't pray to elements we are the ones who rule over them you can take charge over them and direct them in a certain way can I have an amen? amen glory to god it says the moon shall not strike you by what by night amen then also the night praying in the night results into joy in the morning psalm 30 verses 5 psalm 30 verses 5 says weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning now this particular weeping is not weeping because of the you regret that negative things are going to happen to you i told that when i was talking about tears when we are praying prayers of tears it is not that you pray tears because something is going to go wrong but you pray tears with anticipation of seeing the power and the glory of god in your life are you hearing me so when you're weeping you're weeping with a lock of faith what is the lock of faith father i must see you i will see your glory in my life I will see your love and your power show your love through your power in my case because I'm expecting nothing but your power I am expecting your move and so the bible says when you weep in the night when you weep in the night before god you know that people weep out of unbelief it's so if you weep that things are going to go wrong that, that is not the right way of weeping that one is unbelief weeping out of hopelessness that because things have gone south no when you're weeping before god you are putting i mean you get so personal and say lord i have known you before you've done it you will do it again for me do you understand you bless it to him you appeal to him you get personal with him as you've done it before do it again because i know you are able glory to god i know you can help me i know you can intervene i know you can change this case i may not be able but you are able and so you appeal to him the bible says when you weep in the night joy shall come in the morning somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. glory to god and so instead of weeping because of negative things Lord why has it happened to me why has it no that that will not change the thing it has already happened but you know there is god with all ability to change god can intervene god can perform a miracle god god is able he is able so when you cry you cry because you are anticipating his love you are anticipating his mercy you are anticipating his grace on your life you are not regretting but you are anticipating him to come through for you can I have an amen? amen glory to jesus tonight god will wipe away your tears in jesus name amen. number what now the midnight praise is release and dispatch the ministers of angels they release and dispatch the ministers of angels 
That's why David said, at midnight, I will rise up to praise your name. Psalms 119, verses 62. But I want you to see the practical story in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter number, number 16, verses number 25. Are you there? Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 16, verses 25. Has anybody seen it? Yes. Acts 16, 25. Let's read it. One, two, we go. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. 26. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. Glory to God. There is such a thing as a midnight praise. A midnight praise is a praise that you release to God when you are in a predicament that you don't know where to turn. All the doors are closed. You don't know how tomorrow is going to look like. You don't have a job. You don't have a business. You don't have what to eat. Everything you had is gone. All the people that you called, none has responded positively. Everything seems to be south on your side. At that time, when prayer does not make sense. Do you know when prayer does not make sense? You want to pray, but you don't know what to say. Because you prayed everything at that time, begin to praise God. That's why you need some of this music in church. So that it can help you to praise God. As you sing to God songs of praises, something will happen. Your praises in the most difficult hours is what triggers the ministry of angels. Angels always are released in times of praise. And so when you begin to praise God, when you don't have food to eat and you begin to praise his greatness, when you don't have a job and you begin to praise his greatness, when somebody has disappointed you, you begin to praise his greatness. I'm telling you, you're releasing the ministry of angels in your life. Hallelujah. Learn to praise God in the midnight hour. That time when your mind is going wild. Sleep cannot come into your eyes because you're so worried. Stand up and begin. You are great, great, oh Lord. You are greatly to be praised. You are great, great, oh Lord. You are greatly to be praised. You're the king of kings. The Lord of Lords has sing praise to your name. Most I God, I'm telling you midnight praise is powerful. Are you hearing me? When you release that praises to God, angels will go to action. You will see miracles breaking out of your life from every direction. You will see divine interventions of God come into your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Number nine or number ten, whatever the number. Self-deliverance is effective at night. Self-deliverance is effective at night. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 6, verses 1 to 5. It says, my son, if you be surety for your friend, if you have stricken your hand with a stranger, do this now, my son, and deliver yourself. When you are come into the hand of your friend, go humble yourself and make sure your friend and make sure your friend give not sleep to your eyes no slumber to your eyelids deliver yourself as a roe from the hand of the hunter 
and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. You see, there is such a thing as self-deliverance. What is self-deliverance? This is where you make an initiative to come out of a predicament. Hallelujah. Many, many predicaments have come into people's lives from the word of God as a result of self-imposed curses. That is where your tongue begins to speak things that are not right. Things like, I'm not good enough. Nothing good ever works for me. Nothing good ever happens to me. There are people who have got very bad self-image towards themselves. When anything good happens to them, they are surprised that it has happened. When something bad happens to them, they are not shocked. In fact, they, 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 they say it's always like that. Me, I know. Glory to God. Such a people place self-imposed curses on their lives. If you ever want to deliver yourself from such curses, is you begin to release words of deliverance to you. At night where you stand and say, I am favored and I'm loved. I am the blessed of God. I am the healed of God. The hand of God is on my life. I am successful. My hands are prosperous. They are excellent. My feet steps in the right places. I go in the right direction. My mind is intelligent. In the name of Jesus. When you do that kind of prayer, you are doing self-deliverance. Are you hearing me? And that is the most powerful form of deliverance. It is more powerful than where you ask someone to lay hands to cast out something from you. Because you are walking out of that net by yourself. The Bible says, don't give yourself sleep until you walk out of that bondage. Glory to God. If your heart is giving you trouble, you talk to your heart. And say, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. I have an excellent heart. My heart, I'm talking to you. You are so youthful. You are such a beautiful heart. You are so tender. You are so healthy. You are so vital. Your heartbeats are excellent. In the name of Jesus. Oh, what a heart. You are such a, 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 a heart that doesn't grow weary. In the name of Jesus. You can never be infected by a disease. Because the life of God is in you. The spirit of God flows through you. Oh, rivers of living waters are passing through you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Learn to do self-deliverance. Sometimes the things that you're going through, you've caused them yourself. So what do you do? Late in the night, stand somewhere before the mirror. Oh, by yourself, late in the night and begin to make confessions. I am the blessed of God. I am the favored of God. I am successful. I am prosperous. I am excellent. Whatever I touch works. My business works. My, my, everything around my life. I'm living in joy. I'm living in happiness. I'm happy. I am a happy person. I have joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my light. He is my salvation. He is my strength. I have an advantage. I am favored. I am liked. Glory to God. If you talk like that for seven days and nobody comes to tell you, sister, you're beautiful, then you didn't do it. But if you do it, it let me tell you, it's true. It's very true. These are spiritual realities. Are you hearing me? If nobody comes to say, you know, you, see, you know, in the interview, you are the best. This one is the best. This is the best person to give the job. If nobody, I'm telling you the truth, it works. You see, very powerful spiritual truths are in very simple things. The use of the tongue. Your tongue can do self-deliverance on you. Glory to God. So, you can carry out self-deliverance in the night. Amen. And finally... God expects his priests to bless him in the night. In the night, as the priests of the Lord, we bless God. Remember, he told us that we are kings and priests unto the Lord our God. In the book of Psalms, 
Psalms 134. I want to read to you verses number number 1 to 3. It's not a long psalm. What does the Bible say? Behold, bless ye the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord that made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. Glory to God. The best time to bless the Lord is at night. He says so. Says stand before him, lift your hands and bless him. So the night is used to minister to the Lord. Why must you minister to the Lord? I want you to know that you can never have dominion until you learn to minister to the Lord. You can never walk in spiritual power until you learn to minister to the Lord. If you are ever going to be somebody that will stand up to anything, you must learn to minister to the Lord. That's when your words will begin to carry power. Can I have an amen? amen. And so in conclusion, I want you to know that the night hour prayer is very important. As a child of God, especially if you are going through difficult times in life, don't be a person who is just wallowing in the night you want to sleep. You're forcing sleep to come. Sometimes that failure to sleep is actually a ring bell to you, telling you, wake up and pray. This is the time to change things. Glory to God. Don't waste the night just sleeping all night from 8 o'clock to 8 a.m. in the morning. You can actually begin to set up your alarm. If you want things to change, you don't have a job, you don't have a child, you don't have a business, you don't have a contract, you don't have a house, you don't have a car, you don't have anything that you need to change. You have a situation. There is someone in your family going through oppression. There is a disease that you need healing to come to. There is a circumstance. You want a divine intervention. What you need to do, set an alarm. Take time to sleep. You can begin to sleep as early as 5 o'clock if you so wish. Sleep all the way up to 1. 1 a.m. Let your alarm ring. In case you're a heavy sleeper, set two or three alarms. So that it, it, it irritates you. And also ask the Lord, say, please, I want to wake up and do this thing in the night. Hallelujah. Wake up and begin to make decrees to God. Make decrees. Begin to pray. Begin to declare things. Speak in the night. Lift your hands and worship God. Praise God. Pour out your heart to God. You can do it for one or two hours. One or two hours. Then you fall back to sleep. I'm telling you, as God has said in his word, call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. The Lord will visit you in a mighty way in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout amen. I want you to bow your head in prayer, everybody. Bow your head in prayer. Bow your head in prayer. Wherever you are seated, with your head bowed down in prayer. Before I instruct us to pray, in case you are here and you're saying, Pastor, I want my sins forgiven by God. I want God to forgive my sins. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I'd like you to lift your hand up toward heaven. So that I can pray for you now. I want to see your hand wherever you are. Thank you. I see that hand. Yes. Keep your hand up. Wherever you are, keep your hand up. Yes, I see that hand. God bless you. God bless you. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Yes. Pray this prayer now with all your heart. With all your heart. Pray this prayer. God will hear you. Say, Lord Jesus. Forgive my sins. I believe in you. As my personal Lord and my personal Savior, you died on the cross for me. You rose from the dead for me that I may have life 
and have it to the full. I declare right now by faith that I receive the gift of eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that I'm a child of God. I am born again. I'm a new creation. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. That prayer that you prayed, God had you.